from West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Support for the following is provided by the West Virginia Department of Education and West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Hey! Hey everyone, it's Education Station! Hi, and welcome back to Education Station. I'm your host, Alex Milanese. Education Station is a show where we invite teachers from all across West Virginia to submit videos of themselves teaching their favorite lessons. In today's episode, we're getting three exciting math challenges. All right, before we hop into our first lesson, I have a question for you. Let's say it's dinner time, and tonight you're having a delicious, piping hot pizza. Now you're hungry and you're ready to eat the whole thing by yourself, but there's other people in your house and they want some slices too. So my question is, if you want to divide the pizza up evenly among everyone in the house, how do you figure out how many slices each person gets? Well, if you've done enough math, you know that this is set up as a division problem. But did you know that there's more than one way to actually do division? Well, our first stop is going to be with Ms. Schultz, who has an interesting division technique for us. Let's check it out. Hello, I'm Caitlin Schultz. I'm a third grade teacher in Lincoln County, West Virginia. I will be teaching you a division strategy today. I'll be teaching you about equal groups with division. This is a strategy that you can use if you're not very fluent with your um, multiplication facts or you're just beginning out in division. Now this is a strategy that you really wouldn't want to use if you're dividing with three and four digit numbers just because it'd be a really lengthy process. But if you're just doing basic division facts, this is definitely a strategy that is easy to use and it's going to really help enrich your knowledge. We will be doing division as equal groups. The materials needed are paper, something to write with, and small objects. But the small objects are optional. Let's go ahead and get started. Our first problem is 14 divided by 2. The first thing you're going to do is put a dot underneath the 14. That dot represents the number of dots you will be making or the number of small objects you'll be using. And draw a circle around your second number. That's the number of groups you'll be making. So let's go ahead and start making our groups. One, two. And I'll use small objects for this one. I'll be using cereal. So let's count to 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And you always want to make sure that you're ending in that last group so that you know that you have an equal number in each group. So let's count how many is in our first group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fourteen divided by two equals seven. Let's clear our workspace. Our next problem is 18 divided by three. Let's put our dot under the 18, circle our three, and then let's draw our three groups. I'll be using just dots for this one. Let's start with our making our dots. We'll need 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And we landed in that last group. So let's go ahead and count. One, two, three, four, five, six. 18 divided by three equals six. Let's go ahead with our next problem. We have 21 divided by seven. Let's go ahead and put our dots by the 21, circle our seven for groups, and let's draw our seven groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
scoot this over. Seven. And I'll do dots again for this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Okay, let's count how many are in our first group. One, two, three. So 21 divided by seven equals three. Now this next problem is gonna look a little different. This is just another way to write a division problem. Our smaller number is still going to be our group and our larger number is still going to be our dots. So let's put our dot under the larger number, circle our smaller number, and let's go ahead and make our groups. We'll need five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll go ahead and use cereal for this one. We'll count to 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let's count how many is in our first group. One, two, three. And our answer for this one's gonna actually go above. So we have 15 divided by five equals three. Let's clear our workspace. We next have 16 divided by four. Let's go ahead and put our dot under the 16, circle the four, and draw our four groups. One, two, three, four. And I'll go ahead and use the cereal again. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. we landed in our last group. Let's go ahead and count how many are in our first group. One, two, three, four. So 16 divided by four equals four. I hope this helps. Have a great day. Thanks, Ms. Schultz. Not only was that a cool way to do division, but it also kind of made me want to go eat some cereal. Hmm. All right, well, next up is Ms. McGrady, who's going to review some handy tips for subtraction. Let's go. I'm going to talk to you about some strategies that you can use when subtracting two-digit numbers or a two-digit number from a one-digit number. We're going to talk about some strategies that you can use when you need to regroup and when you don't have to regroup. So let's take a look at our first strategy. Our first strategy is to use those place value blocks. Now we're not in school and we don't have our place value blocks, but we can always make them on a piece of paper or a whiteboard and make our own place value mat. So that's what I've done. I've made my own place value mat to help me solve 36 minus 14. Now a little poem that we use in my class that really helps us out is more on the top, no need to stop. More on the floor, go next door and get 10 more. So we use that poem to help us figure out if we need to regroup or not. We call this the floor and so let's take a look at this problem. Do I have more on top or more on the floor? That's right, there's more on top. So there's no need to stop. That means I'm ready to start subtracting. So I have six and I want to take away four. Now another thing to remember is that we always start in our ones place. We start in our ones place because if there's more on the floor and we have to go next door to get 10 more, that's going to change things a little bit. So we always want to start in that ones place value. So let's go back to it. Six minus four, I come over here and I just mark out four. One, two, three, four. And that leaves me with two. Now I'm going to move to my tens place. I have three and I want to take one away. So I'm going to take away one and that leaves me with two for an answer of 22. Now let's take a look at another one. Let's do 
36 minus 18. So this time I'm going to start by putting 36 on my place value mat. 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Now I have to look in my ones place, my 6 minus 8. Is there more on top or more on the floor? That's right. This time there's more on the floor. My poem tells me to go next door and get 10 more. So we're going to take from our 10 and we're going to break that 10 into 10 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I'm ready to regroup these numbers because I no longer have three tens and six ones. Now I have two tens and 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 ones. Now I'm ready to subtract. So I have my 16 and I'm gonna take away eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm going to move to my tens place. I have two and I want to take away one. And that leaves me with one for an answer of 18. So that's one strategy that you can use using a place value mat that you draw on your own. Or if you have some place value blocks, you can use those too. Another way is to use our regrouping strategies to work out problems like 47 minus five. This is where my poem comes in really handy. So I look in my ones place and I ask, do I have more on top or more on the floor? And we call this line here our floor. So I have more on top, no need to stop. So I'm ready to subtract. Now I can do this a couple ways. I know, maybe you know your fact families and you, you know what seven minus five is, or I can put five in my head and count up to seven, or I can swipe that five and count up seven. Let's swipe it. Five, six, seven. For an answer of two. And then I have four, and this is what we say zero, so it is four for an answer of 42. Okay, let's look at another one. This time let's do 32 minus eight. This time I have to look in my ones place and ask, do I have more on top or more on the floor? This time I have more on the floor, so I have to go next door and get 10 more. So I'm gonna go next door and I'm gonna take one from my tens place. I had three. If I take one, that leaves me with two. Now I take one to move them over into my ones place, which means 10 plus two, which is 12. Now I can use one of those strategies and this time I'm gonna put eight in my head and count up 12. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And that leaves me with four. And then I have my two Nothing in my tens place there, so it's two, 24. Now let's take a look at this one. Forty-four minus fifteen. So I looked at my ones place and I asked, do I have more on top or more on the floor? And here I have more on the floor. So. I'm going to go next door and get 10 more. So I have four and I take one and that leaves me with three. And then I move those tens to my ones place. So I have 10 plus four and that is 14. So now I'm going to swipe the five and count up to 14. So I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And that's an answer of nine. And then I have three and I take one away and that leaves me with two for an answer of 29. So that's another strategy that you can use. I'm gonna leave you with one more strategy using addition to help you solve subtraction problems. So here what I would do is I would Ask myself, what plus five will give me seven? Five, six, seven. And I put down my two. And then I bring down my four because I don't have anything to subtract on this side for an answer of 42. Let's look at one like this. This time I have 32 minus eight. 
This time I ask myself, what plus eight will give me two? That won't work, will it? If I count up from eight, I'm not gonna say the number two. Eight, nine, 10, 11. I could keep counting, but I'm not gonna say the number two. So, in this case, I have to make this two 12. And I'm gonna put a little one right there and make that 12. Now, I'm gonna swipe it. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And that leaves me with four because four plus eight is 12. Then I come over here and I say, what plus one will give me three? And the answer is two for an answer of 24. Let's look at one like this, 44 minus five. So this time I'm gonna ask myself, what plus five will give me four? And once again, I can't do that. So. I'm gonna put a little one right here to remind me, actually let's make this 15, to remind me that this is 14. Okay, so I'm gonna ask myself, what plus five will give me 14? So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And that is nine. This time, I'm gonna make this two. And I'm going to ask myself, 2 plus what gives me 4? And the answer is 2 for an answer of 29. Now, I hope that these strategies have been helpful for you. And I hope that you can use one of them to help you out when you are subtracting two-digit numbers or a two-digit number from a one-digit number. All of these strategies will work to give you the correct answer. You've got to decide which one works best for you. Thanks, Ms. McGrady. Now, so far we've covered division and subtraction but we've definitely saved the most challenging topic for last. But then again, you look like a really smart group, so I'm sure you can handle what Ms. Garrison has in store for us. Let's check it out. Hello, my name is Ms. Garrison, and today I am going to teach a lesson about finding the factors of a number. Finding the factors of a number is important is because we use it quite a bit when we add, subtract, multiply, and simplify fractions. We're going to start out by, I'm going to give you the definition of what a factor is. A factor is a number that divides evenly into another number. That means it divides evenly into another number without anything left over or remainder. Now, before we even start with examples, I'm going to give you a couple of tricks to think about when you're finding the factors of a number. Trick number one, the first factor of every number, no matter what number it is, no, no matter how big or how small, is always going to be the number one. And the reason it's the first factor of every number is because one goes into every number evenly without having a remainder. Trick number two is the last factor of every number is going to be the number itself because the number itself is going to go evenly into any given number without having a remainder. Let's work some examples and find the factors of some numbers. First number, we're going to find the factor of is going to be the number 10. Now don't forget what our rule was, our, our um, tricks. Trick number one is the first factor of every number is going to be one. So we're going to write one. Now I'm going to march up through all the numbers until I get to the number 10 and see which numbers go evenly into the number 10. Now I'm going to start, I started with 1, now I'm going to go to number 2. I know that 10 is an even number and I know that 2 goes evenly into any even number. And I also know that 2 times 5 equals 10. So that tells me that 2 is definitely a factor of 10. So I'm going to write the 2. Now I'm going to keep marching up and I'm going to go to 3. 3, 6, 9, 12 is not a factor of 10. 4, 
No, five, yes, because I know that two times five equals 10. Six, six, 12, no, seven, no, eight, no, nine, no, and 10, I know, because that was our second, second trick, is that 10 goes evenly into 10. So the factors of 10 are one, two, five, and 10. Let's try another example. Let's try the number 15. Now, remember trick number one, our first factor of every number is going to be one. I'm going to march up all the way to the number 15. I know 15 is not an even number, so I know two does not go into it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. It does not go in the 15. I know 3 does because I know 3 times 5 equals 15. 4 does not. 5, we already said. 5 times 3 equals 15. I'm going to march all the way up. 6, no. 7, no. 8, no. 10, 10, 20, 30, no. I'm going to keep marching up until I get to our second trick, which I'm going to stop at the number 15. So the factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. Let's look at the factors of 10 and 15 again, and I'm going to show you something that the factors usually have a partner. For example, I know that 1 times 10 is 10, so they are partners. And 2 times 5 is 10, so they are partners. And the number 15, 1 times 15 is 15. And 3 is a partner of 5, because 3 times 5 equals 15. Okay, I would like us to try another example. And let's try to find the factors of the number 12. Trick number 1 tells me I'm always going to start with 1. I know 12 is an even number, so I know 2 goes into every even number, so I'm going to go with 2. If I count by 3s, 3, 6, 9, 12, so that tells me 3 is. I know that 4, 4 times 3 is 12, so that makes 3 and 4 a factor of 12. I know that 2 needs a partner. It does not partner with 5, but it does partner with 6. I'm going to march on up until I get to 12. 7, no. 8, 16, no. 9, no. 10, 20, 30, no. 11, no. 12, yes. And the partners are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. So the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. I would like to challenge you to find the factors of 9. I'm going to give you a few minutes and see if you can find those factors. Hopefully you have had plenty of time. We know that the, fact, the first factor of every number is going to be 1. It's not an even number, so it's not going to be 2. Yes for 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. 4, no. 5, no. 6, no. 7, no. 8. And the last trick is the number itself. Now let's look at the partners here. 1 times 9 is 9. But what partners with 3? It doesn't seem to have a partner. But I know the reason it doesn't have a partner is because 3 times 3 equals 9. So 3's partner is actually itself is 3. Okay, a few more examples. I would like to challenge you to try to find the factors of 6. I will give you a few moments. Hopefully you've had time. We start with the one. It's an even number, so we know it's two. Two times three is six, so we know its partner is three. Four, five, and 
The last one, the last factor is going to be six. Okay, let's try one more example. This is our last example. I would like to give you time to try to write the factors of eight. Hopefully you have finished. One, because we know that's the first factor of all of these. It's even number, so two. Two needs a partner, which is four. And one needs a partner, which is eight. So the factors of eight are one, two, four, and eight. Now, your next challenge I would like to challenge you on is trying to find the factors of different numbers and to practice them. So that way, when you go to learn the skill of adding, subtracting, multiplying, or simplifying fractions, it will be much easier for you. Have a great day and thank you for tuning in. Thanks, Ms. Garrison. Now, if you enjoyed this content and you want more like it, you can always check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash wvpublicbroadcasting. There, you'll find these episodes of Education Station, along with hundreds of other great videos. And don't forget, you can also keep up with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash wvpublic. All right, well, that wraps up everything for us here today on Education Station. We want to thank all the teachers who submitted their awesome videos, and we want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Education Station.